Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In our today's video, we are going to be looking at 40 most likely questions for physics in JAM 2022. Now we notice that a lot of students are asking that where can they focus? Because we notice that the syllabus given to us in JAM is kind of cumbersome. And many students were unable to read this given syllabus in the stipulated time given to them in JAM. So, because of that, try to make research on, I try to make research on likely questions that occur mostly in JAM. You see, I always advise students that majorly in the questions given to us now in JAM are always in form of 80% of theories and 20% of what calculation. That is in physics. When you get to chemistry also, likely the same thing. Now before I start today's video, please if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my video. Now, I would also like you to what, comment on my videos, please, thank you. Now today we are going to be starting with some questions that are given to us, which I'm going to be starting with based on the topic in which this question is found. Now, let's start with the first question that is given, that, what, that, is, what, that is what most likely to be set in jam. The first question is found under physical quantities. Now, what is the question? This question is mostly solved, set every year. The first question is examples of vector quantities. Now, you'll be given question on examples of vector quantities, although physical quantities will be given to you, but they're trying to test your knowledge on maybe you understand examples of vector quantities that we have. Now, we have what? Examples of vector quantities, velocity, acceleration, moment, displacement, force, electric field, intensity, and magnetic flux. These are examples of what vector quantities that we have. But if this question is to be what asked, for, asked from you, they are going to ask it like this, which of the following given quantities is an example of vector quantity? And you might be saying displacement, density. You might be saying something of what mass, length. Now, the velocity that is there, is an example of what vector quantity. Why the rest are scalar quantity? Now that this scenario is there is that always want to ask question on what examples of scalar quantities that we have. Now you see, as you have vector quantities that we know about, vector quantities are quantities that requires magnitude and both di and direction. Why scalar quantities are quantities that requires only magnitude without any forms of what direction. Now you see. Your knowledge will also be tested on what scalar quantities. Yeah, they set question on this on a yearly basis. So, for example, they said example of scalar quantities is our what? We only know, we know that what we have work, time, mass, distance, and energy. All these are what scalar quantities. Now we are going to be looking at these are what question two. That is the second question that is only set in jam. Now let's take a look at what the third question that is most likely to come out in jam based on their what analysis. The third question is found under forces. This question too is common. What is the question? It said the resultant of two forces, the resultant of two forces acting on an object is, ma is maximum if the angle between if the angle between the objects is what between the two forces is what? Now you see when two forces, let me say we have force F1 and force F2, they are acting, they act at an angle to each other. Now, you see, the resultant of these forces is the, is the diagonal, let me say, they form a kind of what, a parallelogram. The diagonal of this parallelogram indicates the resultant of these two forces. But, you see, the resultant here will be what, maximum resultant, only if the angle that is formed between them, angle theta that is formed between them, is equal to zero degree. When the angle between the two forces is equal to zero degree, the resultant will be what, if the angle between them equals zero degree, then we have what our resultant to be maximum resultant. Now, the next question, which is the fourth question that is asked on the, uh, every year, is all about application of uh, optical instruments. Yeah, optical instruments. But especially, we have this question. The terrestrial telescope has one extra lens more than the astronomical telescope. Why is that the terrestrial telescope has more extra lens more than the what, astronomical what, telescope? One of the major reasons is because of the erection of the image. So that the image that we form with what, an erect image. 
As we have to know that what a, tele a telescope is used to view a distance object to bring it into what to what, very closer to us to see. That is the function of a telescope. Now, so the function of the what of the of the telescope has one extra lens. The function of the extra lens that is there is to make sure that that the the, the, the image that is produced is an erect image. That is number four question. The fifth one is what is the angle of dip? At the magnetic equator. Now, the angle of dip at the magnetic equator is always equal to zero degree. That is the angle of dip. What is the angle of dip at the magnetic equator? That angle is always equal zero degree. That is our angle. Now, the next question that you ask us is found under resonance. Resonance. They said, at resonance, the first angle in an AC circuit is now, at resonance, the first angle is always equal to zero degree. Please note that. At resonance, this question is found under what? AC circuits. All together. Now, at resonance, the first angle is always equal to zero degree. Please note that. Now, the, the seventh question that is also common in JAM is, is that the process of energy production in the sun is... Now, you see, this question of what? Production of energy is found under nuclear physics. Nuclear physics. Now, we believe that there are two forms of what? Energy. I mean, that means we have what? Nuclear fission. Energy can be produced by nuclear fission and also by nuclear fusion. Fusion. So, energy can be produced by these two what? Method. But, you see, the major one that we use in our what? Daily life is what? Nuclear fission. But the sun that is generating light for us produces its own energy using what nuclear fusion, fusion coming together of smaller what part of a nucleus to form a larger nucleus. That's what we call fusion. So the sun generates its energy using nuclear fusion. This question is also what common. All together, the next question that is common in jump is a transistor function mainly as what? A transistor can function mainly as a switch and an amplifier to amplify a voltage. That is the function of a transistor. It functions as a switch and what an amplifier. The next question that they ask us in JAM is that they said, energy losses through eddy current. You see this question is common. I always tell my students that what, if you want to study anything on that what, magnetic field, don't read unnecessary, theor unnecessary theories. There are some aspects that you need to focus because they like to set questions on this. One of the aspects is what? Energy stored in what? And the energy that is energy losses through an ed, through eddy currents. All together. So the energy that is lost through what eddy current can only be reduced by what insulated soft ion core. All together. Sometimes they will draw it for you in the form of diagram in this manner. Remember, we'll be having something like this. They will draw the soft ion core that is form of what cut into different what pieces. We have this. This is what insulated soft ion core. So if if we have an iron core and the iron core is from the world, it's of what? cut into pieces like this. All together. This thing is used to reduce energy loss due to what? Eddy currents. All together. The next thing that we have here is our the set. The effect of a particle in fluid. The effect of a particle in a fluid attaining its stamina velocity is that now. We have for a fluid to attain its stamina velocity, we believe that the weight is equal to the retarding force. At stamina velocity, the weight of the body should be equal to the what? The retarding force. All together. That is that. Now, if you want to know more about this, then you can what comment in my video to tell me that what success arena, please do a video on social topic. I'm gonna give you likely details on what each of these topics one after the other but just comment on the video by what either putting text in my video or tell me any form of video that you want me to explain to you in physics now the next question that is there is that what water is a poor thermometric liquid why is it that water is a poor thermometric liquid it is because water wet glass altogether mercury is mostly used in what thermometer just because mercury does not wet glass that is why we use mercury in what thermometer as a thermometric liquid altogether now the twelfth question number 12 i say i'm going to be giving you 40 questions that are likely to what occur in your jam this year the twelfth question is what 
to produce an enlarged and erect image with a concave mirror, the objects must be positioned between. Now, you see, for you to produce an enlarged image, altogether, normally we believe that what a concave mirror can only produce a real image, an inverted image. It produces real and inverted, real and inverted image. That is the function of a concave mirror. But a concave mirror can as well produce an enlarged, which is magnified image, and also it will be erect. That means instead of it to be upside down, it will not upright like this. So a concave mirror can also produce this, but only in one position. What is that position? If the object is placed between the focus of the mirror and the pole of the mirror, which we call FOP. Object is placed between the focus and the pole. At this position here, the, the, the mirror tends to produce an enlarged, but this image that is producing is kind of what virtual image. Now, please don't forget that what virtual image is the only image that is erect. No real image is ever what erect. All together. Now, the next thing, the next question, which is question 13, is the phenomenon that makes sound persist when its sound, it, when its source has been removed. Look up. You notice that what when you remove the source of sound, you notice that the sound con it is what continues. So that phenomenon we call it reverberation. Reverberation. We call it reverberation. This is the phenomenon that makes sound persist after the words the source has been removed. Now the next question is question 14. They said the colors seen in soap bubbles. The colors seen in soap bubbles are due to what? Now, one of the major applications of dispersion, are you getting it? Is that color that is seen in soap bubbles? So let's get that all together. Now, the color that is seen in soap bubble are due to the effect of dispersion, which is the separation of spectrum of white lights when it enters into another medium. All together, like glass medium or water. All together. Now, let's take a look at the question 15. They said the electromagnetic wave that can be produced, that can be produced by eating effects. Or let me say the electromagnetic wave that produces eating effects in the environment. As we just know that we have different, different types of electromagnetic wave. But the one that produces eating effects is what infrared ray. Infrared. We have the infrared ray. Now this electromagnetic wave produces eating effects. It is always found in what? In sunlight. All together. Now, the next question here is found under electronics. Electronics. And this one is always common. It is always in front of what? Rivers. One here and one in this what? Other direction. This is the question. They said, pure silicon can be converted to a P-type. All together, for those of you that you've not read electronics, maybe if you want to read electronics, try to study this, or I'll be giving you likely question under electronics. All together, this is one of the likely questions that is found under electronics. They said, pure silicon can be converted to a P-type material by adding a controlled amount of what? Look, take a look at something here. Let me try to breathe the explanation of this for you so that you can understand. Normally, the answer should be a what? A trivalent. A trivalent. Pure silicon can be doped with a trivalent. If pure silicon is doped with a trivalent element, then it's going to produce a P-type semiconductor. P-type semiconductor can be what we produce. But if pure silicon, if pure silicon is doped with a pentavalent element, pentavalent element, then it's going to be producing N-type semiconductor. Now, example of this trivalent element, you can even, they don't want to say trivalent, they will give you in front of the example. What about if silicon is doped with aluminium? Aluminium is a trivalent element, element that has a valency of 3. That's what we call trivalent. Now, if pure silicon is doped with aluminium, it is going to produce p type. Are you together? But if pure silicon is doped with something like arsenic, arsenic is an example. Of a pentavalent element. Why? Because it is found in group 5. All group 5 elements are pentavalent. So if pure silicon is doped with arsenic, it's going to create an n type semi semiconductor. Again, I said if you need a video on this, please 
write in the comment box in the comment section below that what success arena we need to what do video on electronics and i'm going to what, upload video on it thanks now the question next is question 17 they said the particle that is responsible for nuclear fission in a nuclear reactor is what it is neutron neutron is responsible for nuclear fission in a nuclear what reaction that is due to chain reaction all together now the next thing that is there is the what the carbon granule the carbon granule of microphone sorry the carbon granule microphone sorry the carbon granule microphone works on the part on the principle of change in resistance all together the carbon granule of a microphone always work on the principle of what change in resistance change in resistance please try to bring out your pen and note down all this there is no time for you again we only have just only 15 days to the jam or let's say 14 days to do the jam there's no books i want to read now that what make you what a genius overnight all together we just need to what read smartly and understand some kind of thing focus more on some other what, aspects now another question here is that the phenomenon these are question 19 the phenomenon whereby the water droplets in the atmosphere combine with dust particles in the air to reduce visibility is known as what we call it fog fog that is fog which is different from dew all together now the next question that is there is said in a semi in semiconduction sorry in semiconductor junction diode as the depletion of barrier layer is forward bias the layer is what now this question is what's common you see in a semiconductor junction diode a diode is a, a diode is a device that allow the passage uh, the, that allow current to move in only one direction or let me say that allow a unidirectional current to flow not that a diode only allow what a unidirectional what current to flow now as i said in a semiconduction junction diode if it is followed by us the depletion of the barrier layer is what so if the depression or the barrier layer is followed by us what happened to the to the layer itself the layer will be narrow are you getting up to that? It will have a what? A narrow layer. They will just give you what? They will just give you some kind of thing that what? It's going to be wide. It's going to be so so this thing. But the layer is going to be what? Narrow layer. In what? If it is forward bias, it's going to produce what? A narrow layer. All together. Now, the next question that is found, that is my question 20. Now, the next question that is here is question 21. What is the question? It said, the pressure of a fluid. Of a fluid the pressure of a fluid increases its viscosity. I get me increasing in viscosity. Sorry. So no, that one is not part of the question. Let's try to remove that. Question 22. Question 21. Yeah. Question 21. We said to change a DC dynamo to AC dynamo. This question is found under electromagnetism. To change a DC dynamo to AC dynamo, what do we do? If we want to change a DC to an AC dynamo, Commutator should be replaced with what? Slip ring. Slip ring. A DC dynamo to an AC dynamo. Commutator should be replaced with what? A slip ring. Slip ring will be used to what? Replace. That's what we do. We do. Then it's going to convert an AC into what? Oh, sorry, it's going to convert a DC into an AC. Now, the next one is under wave. What's the question? It said transverse wave can be distinguished. From longitudinal wave using the characteristic of what how can we distinguish between transverse and longitudinal there is only one characteristic that distinguishes between both of them which is polarization polarization why because all transverse wave can be polarized but longitudinal wave cannot be polarized so we can use polarization to distinguish between the both of them all together the next one the question is found under magnetism what is the question question 24 he said, the north pole of a magnet can never be separated from the south pole. Because of what? Why can't we separate the north pole from the south pole? It is because of the property which is known as magnetic dipole. Magnetic dipole. Unlike electric charges that can be separated from each other, magnet cannot be what separated due to the what effect of magnetic dipole. All together. Now, all charges are monopoles. Are you getting me? Now, but the magnets are what dipole. Now let's take a look at this. Question 25. The charge carriers in gases are what? 
If they are to ask a question on the conduction of electricity by gases, their major question is always found in this. They always repeat this question. Altogether, the charge carriers in gases are what? You see, charge carriers in gases is electrons and ions. Electrons and ions. And ions. That is the charge carrier in gases. All together, unlike electrolytes, whereby the charge carrier is ordinary ions. In metals, the charge carrier is what? Electrons. In semiconductors, the charge carrier is O's and electrons. Hope you understand what I'm saying here. Now, the next thing that we are having here is found that's question 26. They said the ray which causes gas molecule to glow is known as what? We call it cathode ray. Cathode ray causes gas molecule to what? To glow. Now, let's take a look at another question that is also found under electromagnetism. Now, Lenz law is a law of the conservation of energy. Lenz law is always a law of the conservation of energy. All together, the next thing is question 28. The phenomenon of light bending around an obstacle. This one is always common because it's found on that wave. If you have to see question on wave, it is either you see the calculation, calculation aspect or the theoretical aspect. The theoretical aspect of which we coming out in either the properties of wave. Are we together? Now, this is an example of properties of wave. They said the phenomenon of light bending around an obstacle is, we call it diffraction. Diffraction of light. The next one that we'll be looking at is question 29. We said the instrument that measures both AC and DC is known as what? We call this instrument a moving ion and metal. Moving ion and metal. All together, moving ion and metal is an instrument that can be used to measure both AC and DC currents. Moving ion and metal is used in measuring both AC and DC currents. Now, the next question I'll be seeing here is found under measurement. Many students feel this. What is the question? It said the instrument that measures both. Sorry, I'm sorry. What is the least? Possible error in using a rule graduated in centimeter. Altogether, a rule that is graduated in centimeter, the least possible error, possible error is 0.5 centimeter. Altogether, it is 0.5 centimeter. Please, they might not give you calculation on this, but they will try to what, test your knowledge on this. Altogether, now we've got into question 31. But if I continue with this, I would like you all to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you are watching this video now, please. Click on the subscribe button and the, the like button. Please subscribe and like my video. And don't forget to drop a comment by commenting on Swiss Arena. Please help us release a video on so-so topic. And I'm going to what, respond to it and I will drop the, the video on that. All together. Now let's continue. The next question here is my question 31. They said, the object moves with uniform speed around the cycle. If an object moves with uniform speed around a circle, its acceleration has what? An object that is moving around a circle with uniform speed has a constant magnitude and direction of acceleration. Hello? The acceleration has constant magnitude and direction. Please note that. But don't forget something that what? If, a body, if a body is moving in a circular motion with uniform speed, altogether, the work done on the body is equal to zero. No work is done on the body. Note that. The question is always coming out on that, that. There is no work done on the body, but the acceleration has a constant magnitude and direction. All together. Now, next question, which is my question 32. It said, the motion of a moving skin of a talking drum. This one is common. The motion of a moving skin of a talking drum can rightly be described as, we call it oscillatory motion. Why? Because it's an example of sound wave. Majorly, all sound wave but they are what? Due to what? Oscillation. Figure out. That is vibration, vibration of the particle of the medium. So we call it an oscillatory motion. Now, we are moving further. This is what? Question 33. The, 33, the 33rd question is that what? Isotopes and nuclei, which has what? What are isotopes? We said isotope, the same atomic number but different mass number. Isotope are what? Nuclear. Well, let me say they are elements that has the same atomic number but different mass number. Example is your chlorine. That way, you can have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. 
all together. So we have chlorine, chlorine Cl35 and what Cl37. Both of them have the same atomic number of 17, 17, but their mass numbers are different. All these two, these two we call them what nuclear. These are what isotope, which is different from isotope. Isotone, they what? They they have the same um uh, sorry, an isotone, they have different atomic numbers. All together, sorry, their mass numbers are the same, but the atomic numbers are different. These are what isotones. All together. Now let's continue. So we have question 34. What is the question? It said the net charge on the atom is zero because why is it that the total charge on an atom is equal to zero? It is because the neutron from shell form a shell around the charge proton. All together, the net charge on an atom is equal to zero because the neutron form a shell, shell, shield. Sorry, a shield around the proton. That's why the words the net charge on it is equal to zero. All together. Now, question thirty-five. I think I explained this just now. Gases conduct electricity under what? All gases are going to conduct electricity under low pressure and high voltage. All gases conduct under low pressure and high voltage. Now, question 36. What is the question? For resonance to occur. For resonance to occur in AC cycles. All together. Containing the resistor, capacitor, and inductor. When the frequency source is such that the reactance of the capacitor is equal to the what inductive reactance simply means for resonance to occur, please note this for resonance to occur, then the react the capacitive reactance must be equal to the inductive reactance. When the capacitive reactance is equal to the inductive reactance, resonance is going to what occur. And again, resonance will occur when the angle. Angle of what at resonance is equal to zero degree. Also, resonance is going to occur. Again, resonance will occur when the the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the inductor. Then resonance is going to occur. These are the conditions for resonance to occur. Fc reactance, Fm, which is inductive reactance, they are equal. Voltage of the capacitor is equal to the voltage of what? Inductor and also the angle is also the face angle is equal to zero at resonance. Face angle must be equal to zero all together. Now, the next thing that is there is that we have question 37 in a purely inductive circuit. In a purely inductive circuit, the currents lag behind the voltage in phase by what majorly purely inductive circuits. In a purely inductive circuit, the current will lag behind the voltage altogether by 90 degree. 90 degree. Why in a purely capacitive circuit, the current will lead the voltage by the same 90 degree? Don't forget, current lead in a purely capacitive circuit. Why it lag in a purely inductive circuit? The next question I'll be here that is given to you, which is question 38. The principle of operation of an induction coil is based on what? An induction coil works on the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Are we together? That is the principle of operation. Now, question 39, which is also found under electromagnetic field. What is the question? A dynamo. The function of a dynamo, what is it? They said. Now, a dynamo is a device, or let me say, is a machine that converts mechanical energy into an electrical energy. That is the function of a dynamo. All together. Now, the next, the fortieth question, which is about forty. Next, said I'm going to give you what forty likely question that are possible in jam. The fortieth question is this: In order to convert a galvanometer, in order to convert a galvanometer into an arm meter all together a low resistance a low resistance shunt is connected in what look up if you want to convert a galvanometer into an arm meter then a low resistance now a low resistance is always known is always called a shunt sorry we have low resistance low resistance is known as shunt why high resistance is known as multiplier 
multiplier. When do we use this? Now, how to convert a galvanometer into an amp metal? Then I'll be connecting a low resistance, which is shunt, in parallel. That means I'm going to connect the galvanometer with what a low resistance in parallel, then to be converting it into an amp metal. Why if I want to convert a galvanometer which is into a voltmeter? Sometimes they can give you this name. They won't call it galvanometer. They will call it milliamp meter. Milliamp meter. Now it is still the same thing as galvanometer. Why? Because a galvanometer is what an instrument that is used to measure just a milli current. Current that is what a milliamp. That is the function of a galvanometer. So to convert the galvanometer into a voltmeter, we are going to connect that galvanometer in series with a multiplier. A multiplier is a high resistance. All together. So we convert the galvanometer in series with a multiplier or with what high resistance. All together. So please, if you find this one video interesting and was so helping, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my video.